Hey, welcome to another episode of It Resolves. <laughs> that was great. I <laughs> wish you guys could see this because Will just did the dumbest thing. Oh, one um, day. My name's Kevin. My name's Will, and, and I do the dumbest thing. <laughs> you do. <laughs> this is It Resolves <laughs> with the Friday do it. Standard and Limited Show. This is all your show today, my friend, but... Thank you, thank you. I'm going to do the beginning stuff. Please, please, by uh, all means. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Patreon. Okay. Uh, we've recently set one up. Everything is on there. Tears, pledge goals, whatever. All taken care of. All we need you to do, mm. go check it out. If you want to donate, you yes. do not have to, but if you want to, we encourage you to do so. Again, yes. follow those pledge tiers. There's different rewards for each tier. Uh, so we hope you guys, some, one of them is to just hang out with us, like Skype and hang out with us. We want to do that one a lot. Well, yes, because because we have no friends. Um, basically, we do this <laughs> we do this show in all of our free time. But so. now nah, we want to talk about magic things. Yes, yeah. why you like magic? Why we like magic? You know, just magic stuff. Yeah. Um, and so this is a way for yeah. us to hopefully talk to you guys uh, and just get some face to face time. There's also some play goals where if you donate so much, we'll actually play an online game with you, hang out with you a little bit record that content and post it up on youtube so this is a way for hopefully us to interact with you guys in multiple different ways yep um but again don't feel pressured we're gonna do the show no matter what but uh this is hopefully a way for us to do some awesome new content that oh, we're not yeah. able to do quite yet some things that are a little more <clears throat> expansive and they're in expensive yes uh, but that's <laughs> fine we want to do them we want to go on that adventure together bring you along yes help grow the community it's gonna be awesome guys so we do hope that you will hang out with us uh go check that out we also have all of our other links to all of our other social media stuff in the description twitter face place my book my face insta face <laughs> um all of it's there <laughs> um so go check it out uh we've got a lot of cool content going everywhere right now cool, cool. uh so definitely Drop us a follow, subscribe, like, do whatever you want to do. Even if you just need to come in just to say, y'all suck. If you really feel like we're that bad, that's fine. That'd be awesome. Tell us. We want to know. I'd do a little dance. I'd feel so good. Because you've never really made it until someone until tells you Until somebody hates bad. you, yeah. So we need you guys to tell us we're bad is really what it amounts to. Only if you mean it, though. <laughs> you gotta want it. <laughs> um, okay. But uh, we've got a cool show for you today, but before we get into that, uh, actually a cool deck for you today, but before yes. we get to the deck, we do have our card of the day, our random card of the day. Uh, again, oh. this is always an exciting thing for us. Uh, oh, yeah. We talked last episode. I, part. I hope it's either really good or really bad. <laughs> um <laughs> And sometimes I'm not disappointed, but we'll see what we get well, this time. You're always disappointed if you're casting <laughs> with me. All right. In three, two, one. Scathe Zombies. Well, Just a two, two for three. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All um, right. This goes go. back to Alpha. It's a classic card. Yep. Not a very good card. No. So it's pretty terrible. If you were with us last time, we talked about tribal decks. We did. This, wow, this fits. This I didn't think about this that. This wouldn't even go in a tribal deck. No, it wouldn't. Um, uh, it is literally, there's a lot of text on the card, but it is a 2-2. Two, two none of it means anything. Or 3. Um, yeah, so this is like a historic card solely because it sure. comes from the alpha, beta, the original series yeah. of Magic, but it's just not good. We also talked last episode, if I'm not mistaken, about mm. stats uh, and yeah, how important sure a converted mana cost to the power and toughness of a creature mm -hmm. is and a two two for three is behind the curve if yeah. it's a two two for two it's like okay mm -hmm. at least it's on par but a two two for three is just bad so, again in alpha things were different so right. keeping that in mind but think about how with that mana that you're sitting at, that you're looking at all those lands you are paying for everything on that card so if it's got first strike yeah, you're paying for that. Yep, you're rare. You, I doubt you'll see a one one, or excuse me, a two two with first strike for one or anything. No, because that's just unfair. That's just ridiculous. Right, good. it's unfairly statted. Although Goblin God, there are some haste. there are some two twos for one though. Yeah, Colonian something. What's it called? I don't know. Never mind. Yeah, that. <laughs> but <laughs> right, so you're paying for it, uh, especially not at the common rarity. Are you going to see any of those? Yeah, things? yeah. Right, so to play something for three mana, you are paying three mana for everything this card can do, 
and all it can do is hit the board <laughs> and then block or attack. Yeah. It doesn't get you first strike. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't draw you a card. If it drew you a card, okay, that's a little better. That's actually not terrible. Right? It's, um, it's kind but, of maybe even playable. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's, in a zombie it's, form, I mean, it's, it's tribal. It's draftable at that point, I'll yeah. say, maybe. Um, um, but, but no, nah. as is, this is terrible. Yeah. Um, this, this is getting close to the funny terrible range but it's almost there if it was a one one if it was it would have been there yeah if it was a one one for three that's so bad if it was a two one it would have been there <laughs> um yeah Whew. well all right moving on random card out of the way scathed zombies here's the deal our Ouch. resident standard slash limited expert <laughs> hey! uh, Will has That's me. done some research. A little bit. A little bit. On a deck. A spur of the moment. I was I was searching for a topic for today. I was looking for something. Uh, considering all these things, because there's so much to think about whenever you talk about standard, um, you know, changing metas, what deck is strongest, uh, what cards do we have access to? All these things to think about. And I'm searching MTG Goldfish. Shout out to them. This is where I'm pulling this information, some of these ideas. Go okay, uh, watch their videos too. By they're the way. super informative. They're way yeah, better than us. They're um, really cool. So, <laughs> I mean, they are. Uh, yeah. This one just so happens to be a budget deck that normally you talk about budget decks being this is a fun thing you can try, but it's really not going to make a splash. Yeah. This will beat a few decks, but it's not going to be not mm-hmm. be that good. But this deck is a little different in that. It's just so simple and so low to the ground, which you'll see in a moment. It's got some playability, uh, especially in a format like Standard that comes out really popping mm-hmm. on turn five, turn four, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so let's get into it. So this deck is called Two Ticks Red. T-I-X <laughs> Red. Uh, named, I believe, for tickets. So, you can buy that's it. a great connection. Big brains on wheels. <laughs> You can buy for essentially two tickets. That's kind of awesome. Right? If you're an, a Magic Online player and you two have tickets. two tickets, I mean, why not? Like, I guess, yeah. Um, <laughs> or uh, in real life, for the hot price of twenty seven eighty nine. That's breaking the budget for as me. as budget as they come. Yeah, that's pretty. That's it's fantastic. Cheap. Um, and it's a pretty fun deck. So, uh, the aim of this deck is really to get in at turn four for the win. Or at least put them at lethal. Yeah. Okay, so at turn four being the power spikes for a lot of Marvel decks, um, Mm. Mardu is a different monster. Yeah. You don't really win a lot of your Mardu matches, but but (laughs) Marvel being the biggest uh, contender for it to beat, getting under at turn four is a must. Uh, So let's talk about some ways they do that. Um, They run a lot of one drops. Uh, 12 all total in the deck. Wow. Right, so 12 (laughs) copies. Uh, You got... Bomat Courier. It's oh, a like that card, one actually. one for one. Yeah, it's really good. Haste. It says whenever Bomat Courier attacks, <laughs> exile the top card of your library face down. You can't look at it. You don't know what it is. For one red, it says discard your hand, sacrifice the courier, and put all cards exiled with it into their owner's hands. So your aim with this guy is to get him out early, mm-hmm. start swinging, <clears throat> because you want to drop your hand eventually. Yeah. Right. You want to put everything out there. When you do that, Pay a red, sacrifice your guy. You pick up seven more cards or six more cards, whatever it is. Yeah, uh, and then you can refuel that way. So that's a really cool. Si- I like that card a lot. It's wow. very smart because a lot of the trouble with red decks, they yeah. don't get card advantage. Right, You're exactly right. They fizzle so early. So getting this guy out early and basically having insurance or a plan B. Mm-hmm. Now you are you don't know what they are. You are gambling, but I mean, cards are better than no cards, yeah, no matter what. Yeah, definitely. Right? Uh, if your opponent lets this guy live, um, congrats on your win. Um, <laughs> it's just really, it's, this is such a sneaky engine for your deck. Yeah. I want to point that out. Uh, it's worth noting it is very easy to kill. Oh, it's a 1-1. One, one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's worth noting. And you're totally. not going to be able to always attack profitably no. with it. But what's nice about this deck and other red decks is, yeah, they could block it. But there are so many other threats that they might that's want true. to block more. Mm-hmm. Or it might just be worth blocking more that this guy might just sneak in and survive. So yeah. you know he's a he's a That's good one. That's fair. Um, probably the worst one drop on this list is next. Um, it's not great. You'll see. Uh, it's Falconrath Gorger. Excuse me. It is a two one for one. 
Uh, each vampire creature card you own that isn't on the battlefield has madness. The madness cost is equal to its mana cost. So, Interesting. Yes, it doesn't play with that really at all. Okay, I was wondering. No, it's for the two. Yeah, um, I figured. There is a card that makes you discard cards. We'll get into that in a second, but it's it's not great. Okay. Um, it, again, it's here for the power. Yeah, you know, that two, makes sense. two power on turn one, is, it's nice. If they don't it's have relevant, a, yeah, yeah. If their turn one play is um, the green fetch a land, make two energy card. I forget mm-hmm. the name. Then I mean, you're in for two damage. Cool. Yeah, exactly. That works. Um, <clears throat> the next soul scar mage. Oh, I like this card. Flip it in the other direction. It is a one two. It has prowess. It says, if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a creature and opponent controls, put that many minus one, minus one counters on that creature instead. Um, so this card is interesting in this set. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people wrote it off as being just a weird effect. Yeah. But think about this for a second. <laughs> indestructible. There are five cards now in, a, in standard that say indestructible. One thing that gets around indestructible you're right. Minus one, minus one counters. Yeah. So, if you fling a lava axe at one of the gods now, that's a good point. Yeah. It is dead. Um. So yeah, sorry, I had to make sure that it wasn't like a permanent. But yes, yeah, it's yeah. a source, so you can essentially burn out big guys with this. Mm-hmm. Now, later in the game, if that's what you're doing, if you're throwing a lava axe at a <laughs> god, you're probably not gonna win that one. No. Because again, this is a red deck. A you want a red really. deck. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're not going to get there. Um, and the prowess is nice. It's just kind of an added bonus. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, it's just a one drop. You're just yeah. looking to get that damage out. Go away. All right. Uh, moving on to some other creatures. Uh, the two drop and really the meat of the deck, mm-hmm. the muscle, you could say. Blood Rage Brawler. Thank you for acting that out. I flex for Kevin. <laughs> he got super jealous. I did a little. My puny muscles. I mean, they're less puny than mine (laughs) anywho um that's not true uh blood rage brawler talk i love this card he's fantastic and this is really your only interaction you'll get with the vampire yeah um because he's the one that says when he enters the battlefield discard a car he a car a card he has a four three for two which are stupid stats that's insane yeah they're that's really good so good um He's fantastic. Where else? Limited. Yeah. Yeah. He is he's a great draftable guy. Oh my gosh, yes. Um Yeah, and he's you're looking to get him out and then usually swing him in somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh we'll get to that in a second. Uh Borderland Marauders, our other two drop. Uh it is a one two for two. It says whenever Borderland Marauder attacks, it gets plus two plus oh until end of turn. Now, hold on, everybody. <laughs> if you know this card immediately. You'll know it's from M15. What? Which is a little weird. That is a little weird. However, guys, you would be thinking that M15 is not legal and standard, you dummy. You are we're technically right. What qualifies you to make this show, Will? Well, Seriously. Really? With a play like this. Really nothing. <laughs> but hear me out, guys. <laughs> Don't close the tab just yet. Uh, this card was printed and put into a deck that came out um i'm trying to remember and i can't and i'm sorry uh it was put into an intro deck of some description uh that is still in the standard blocks Mm -hmm. i'll say this is really vague in there because i don't know specifics and i'm sorry i just googled it to make sure that i wasn't like wrong (laughs) but (laughs) it is technically standard legal right now it's legal in every format go play it in vintage no don't do that uh it's kind of odd and interesting that it kind of backdoors its way into this deck. Yeah. Uh, and it's not s- super special, but it's kind of neat. It says whenever it attacks, it gets plus two, plus oh. Meh. Yeah. Cool. Okay. It's just damage. Yeah, it's just extra damage, which, funny enough, you want that. <laughs> um, One all-star in this deck, on crop crasher, again, limited all-star. Yeah. Has haste. You can exert it. And when you do, target creature can't block this turn. It is a three, two for three. Um, It's good it's solid yeah anytime you can get around things like that uh imagine turn four you are you have lethal on the board they play ulamog exile two things but if you've got this guy in your hand you're good just wait yeah. play him now that ulamog can't block and you win yep cool uh reckless bushwhackers another one we talked about him in our um our tribal show we did he is a goblin 
Little goblin guy. Little goblin guy. He is a 2-1 for 3, <laughs> or he has a surge cost. One colorless, one red. He's got haste. Says, when reckless bushwhacker enters the battlefield, if its surge cost was paid, other creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0, oh, and gain haste until end of turn. Oh, such a good card. Yeah, and this is kind of what you want to be using him for. Yeah. Um, Because, you know, it's an ETB effect, so mm. anytime, put it back in your hand, pay it again. Yep. Um that's really why he's in here uh he as he's not the lone three drop but he's just a two of just because he's not three damage and he's like, not guaranteed three power and the thing about this card too is if you actually have to play him as a creature it's a little less good it's right definitely. you're in a bad position at that point point. Definitely. and so you don't want to draw too many of these you want just enough to be able to get in those damage yeah. those points of damage and if you're surging in every turn you kind of don't need multiples like right you can if you have multiples True. that's fine you can search two why not yeah but, but you know hopefully at that point you're close enough to the win anyway definitely. that it doesn't matter definitely so this being a simple red deck creatures make up the bulk of it but that's it mm -hmm. there are 25 creature cards in there um 12 uh i'll say other spells instants and such you've got uh, built to smash as a combat trick this is probably a great one uh, target cre attacking creature gets plus three plus three until end of turn if it's an artifact creature it gains trample until end of turn that's awesome yeah so this goes on your <clears throat> courier your bow mat courier yeah um at its best anyway um probably to help it keep it alive and win combat yeah, absolutely. usually um but it is just a good combat trick three three for one mana that's a lot that's substantial yeah i'll say and that's probably the most you're going to get for one mana yeah probably. um but it's really efficient damage mm -hmm. i'll say um now it is important to note target attacking creature so this has to be played after at, declared attackers yes or after blocks something like that i guess after declaring blockers. i thought it was a little more restrictive but no you're right you can do it i think after blocks are declared you can before damage okay yes cool cool moving on <laughs> i got a little scared for a second we're good uh shock a one mana shock deals two damage to target creature or player is in this deck as a play set um, any kind of burn, any kind of damage for reach is good in an aggro deck. So I think this say? is an interesting call. Um, okay. And it shows the hyper aggressiveness of this deck by sure. running shock over something like magma spray, which deals the same amount of damage, yep. but only two creatures. Yep. Um, I think the flexibility that this can hit the player for those last couple points of damage is really, really interesting. Yeah. Um, and it flexes its muscles in that respect that it is just hyper aggressive deal the damage doesn't really matter what the mm -hmm. opponent's doing so yeah. i think that's really cool yeah uh red decks are interesting in that sure they're they're throwing stuff on the board and responding yeah. to things on the board but their goldfish quote unquote they're running the deck is simply to throw everything at you yeah so th you're right this is a great example of that mm -hmm. um magma spray is considered uh as a burn choice for yeah, like I think this, a lot of the competitive decks now, um, things like Is It Control and mm. stuff like that, are running uh, more of the Magma Sprays to deal with some of the problematic creatures because their primary sure. win isn't to burn the opponent out. Right. Um, but in a deck like this where you are just trying to deal that damage, it makes more sense, I think, to run the Shocks because it does the same job that Magma Spray does, except sure. it doesn't exile the creature or whatever. But, right. Um, in well, this case, it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll see that we have another option to do the same thing okay. uh, in Incendiary Flow. Uh, deals three damage to target creature or player. If a creature dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. Well, there you go. So a better Magma Spray. Yeah. Um, you could include both that and Magma Spray. Yeah. However, Shock being for one mana, I think is far better and suits this deck better yeah. to its purpose. Although Magma Spray costs one. I think that does not cost No, it's cost one. Are you positive? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I misspoke. Um, but we're getting down to the most important card in the deck. The most important? Yes. Okay. It is. And okay. wouldn't you know it? It's Cartouche of Zeal. Weird. Uh, <laughs> yes. But That's hear me. That's cool, though. Isn't it? In a constructed deck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you laugh. Uh, so your optimal plays... We've pulled it off actually in uh, limited. <clears throat> have Excuse we? me. We have. Is turn three? Uh, sorry, turn one, one drop. Yeah. Turn two, blood rage brawler. Turn three, blood rage brawler into cartouche. We have done that in limited. Yep. That is a great play. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's 
redonkulously strong. <laughs> uh, so Cartouche, for those of you who don't know, uh, when it enters the battlefield, target creature cannot block this turn. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has haste. Um, That's awesome. It's good. Um, but we were talking about the cartouche. It's probably the worst cartouche. Yeah. In that. At least one of the worst. Well, yes. In haste, giving it. Like, haste is its ability. We'll say. Yeah. Sure. It's not the best. And it's. It's only relevant the turn it comes out. Exactly right. Um, um, the only real buff is the plus one, plus one. Although, the turn it does come out, being able to basically n- mm-hmm. nullify a blocker. Right. And a deck like this is amazing. Yes. Um, generally, it kind of doesn't matter, right? But, like, in this deck, sure. it matters a lot more. Yeah, especially when your creatures aren't as powerful as they could be. Probably a little underpowered, mm-hmm. other than uh, compared to other creatures. It You definitely want a little bump this way to yeah. hopefully win combat. Um, so the deck I compare this most to or really just kind of fight it against, you could say, is Marvel. Um, when turn three, they're looking to get out the... Help me out, Kev. The green-blue guy gives you two energy, draws, draws you, a, you card. a card. I don't know the name of it, but I know that card. But that's I can't it's, think of it. Imagine that you were on the draw, yeah. and that was their turn three play. Mm-hmm. So they've now got a blocker turn three. Well, if this is your turn three play... They don't they, have yeah, a blocker, that's and right. you get in a ton of damage. Yeah, potentially. And that's Magic Candyland. What yeah. do I want the most of? That yeah. would be it. Um, but that's still really good. And now they might not be able to consider their Marvel because that's too slow. Now they have mm. to get out guys to block, and that puts them off their Marvel plan, Yeah, uh, which I like in this deck. Um, we've mused back and forth to each other, and sometimes on the show of how do you beat Marvel, uh, and one way is just to be faster. Yeah. But to be faster, you had to play cheaper guys, and that just didn't feel good. That didn't feel good in standard. Mm-hmm. That's Mardu's kind of flaw, you know. You don't see a planeswalker in red deck wins usually, yeah, because they're just frankly too slow, mm-hmm. right? Except Tibalt. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Who said that? Tibalt, the best planeswalker. <laughs> so in its sideboard, you've got Lava Axe. It says an additional cost to Lava. Excuse me. <clears throat> you have Lightning Axe. <laughs> <laughs> As an additional cost to play Lightning Axe, discard a card or pay five. Lightning Axe deals five damage to target creature. Uh, that is another source to use uh, Falcon Wrath Gorger's Madness ability with. Mm-hmm. Um, again, though, you have to have a Falcon Wrath Gorger out and have to have Falcon Wrath yeah. Gorger in your hand. It's a little tricky, um, but Lava Axe is. Jesus. Lightning Axe. Lightning Axe. Whew. Stay on it, Resolves. We learn how to read. I. I not successfully apparently <laughs> it's gonna make a joke about i can't read but I, just, I, just, I don't feel like it's right so with um water axe it is a one red instant for five damage that's pretty that's great. pretty awesome however it's in the sideboard because it is only for creatures yeah right uh so this goes in specifically for removal here you go magma spray it is for there one you go. uh deals two damage to our creature if that creature dies exile it for again more removal um not necessarily for the mirror. You don't expect seeing a lot of two ticks red. Uh, but hey, uh, against Mardu, you need stuff like that. Well, and right? also it gets rid of an early Lord against zombies or something like that. Sure. Again, the Lord doesn't pump itself in zombies. Ah, so if right. it's the first one, you're able to magma spray it. That's great. Then you've got uh, some destructive tampering. It's a sorcery for one red, two colorless. Choose one, destroy target artifact or creatures without flying can't block this turn. If you need more reach, if you're mm-hmm. against another kind of creature deck, you know, zombies being aggressive and recursion-y, yeah. you'd say they're still slower than you. Mm-hmm. So if you can keep them from blocking... You're on the right plan. Yeah, you will probably win a little quicker. Yeah. Uh, Savage Alliance. Again, two colorless, one red. It's an instant this time with an escalate cost of one. Uh, choose one or more, of course. Creatures target player controls... Green... Sorry. Creature's target player controls gains trample until end of turn. <laughs> There's a crack in my phone. I was like, what is that? I know what that is. Uh, it's me being clumsy. Or Savage Alliance deals two damage to target creature. Or Savage Alliance deals one damage to each target to each creature target opponent controls. It seems great. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, it's kind of a catch-all. S- yeah, pseudo catch-all is what mm-hmm. I was going to say. Um, in that none of those effects are super overpowered. Yeah. Um, but that's all stuff you want, right? Uh, damage to your opponent's guys. Well, it's worth noting, too, the overpowered effects do less in this deck because you're trying mm. to win, like you said, probably by turn four. Yeah. And, like, hopefully at that point, they're not doing anything too crazy. 
You know what I mean? That's so true. the more powerful cards are cards that you just hope not to have to deal with. You're not planning for them because you're hopefully never going to see them. That's a great point. Um, yeah. You know, you plan for the little guys because those are the guys that you're going to be taking on most often. Right. Um, um, you're absolutely right. Um, so talk about why this deck works so well. Uh, it does sometimes. <laughs> and that's the thing with red decks. Uh, especially mono red decks not having that card advantage um you are gonna have consistent games inconsistent games that's just kind of what you have to expect uh it only runs 19 mountains 19 being one of the smallest amounts i've seen in standard as of late yeah um in all honesty that seems a little high to me well you would think so but without like fetchable things you don't need to like yeah find lands or anything like that it works perfectly because okay. what you really want to do is have either mm -hmm. one mountain in your opening hand and some one drops mm -hmm. or two mountains in your opening hand yeah. and then you don't draw nothing else yeah no more mountains yeah um this deck will die if it draws too many lands and it floods out of yeah. course again you don't get that card advantage um because if you can't play your hand you know you don't want to be discarding cards even if they are mountains mm -hmm. uh specifically with bowmat courier yeah right being your only i'll say card advantage engine mm -hmm. and put an asterisk on that <laughs> uh, because let's say, hypothetically, you've attacked, you've got two cards exiled with a courier, and they magma spray it. Mm. You're still holding four or three cards. Sure, you could, in response, sacrifice it, pitch your hand, and mm -hmm. pick up those two cards, but now you're down a card and lost a guy. Yeah. Maybe those are two mountains. Yeah. You know? With and I think in that situation, you have to leverage how good your current hand is. Sure. If it's just not going to do anything, I think you take the risk. Yeah. So my point with the card advantage is, yes, it's card advantage ish. Yeah, but it's it's an engine for right. card advantage, less than it's not so much not the guaranteed. immediate card advantage. Right, right, right. Um, so okay, talking about what works <laughs> is like we said, going against decks and getting around blockers. So on crap crasher, cartouche of zeal, that's why it works so well. Right. Um, being able to exert the guy get around a specific blocker or make them not bro block profitably is really mm -hmm. powerful for this deck. We had an aggro episode a little while ago. Uh, you can go watch that to learn a little bit more about like what it's thinking of. Um, but I want to talk about kind of where the deck can go from here. Um, so this is a bare bones, really simple red deck wins, basically. Yeah. Right? Really budget, really cheap. Um, you could effectively maybe retool this deck, mm -hmm. add some more lands, add some bigger guys to it, Glorybringer could fit into this. Mm -hmm. um, Glorybringer being a five drop, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Um, which is hefty for a for red, a red deck. deck. Yeah. Um, so you need some ways to survive past. You and know, in that turn in five. that situation, like I mentioned earlier, you know, if you're planning on winning in the first few turns, mm -hmm. you don't plan for the later turns as right. much. But mm -hmm. if you're planning to get to that five drop, mm -hmm. that six drop, whatever it ends up being, you you have to plan. For your opponent's game plan more so sure because they're gonna have more time to get their plan together definitely uh whereas you know if you stick mm. to the low to ground creatures <clears throat> you're not really caring about their game plan yeah. because you're on your game plan and if it's faster you win and yeah. that's it and that's yeah you've got no strategy other than winning yeah which is kind of a weird thing to say but that's but it. hey, go listen to our aggro principles episode where we talked about that but no honestly dude it's um <laughs> It might help you understand why this deck is the way it is. Yeah. Um, so it, it fits in standard as probably a tier two deck, I was saying to Kevin. Um, uh, the author of that article has it at tier three. Um, I suspect that you can make it a little more consistent in mm -hmm. certain ways. Um, Kevin mentioned trimming lands. Mm -hmm. Not many. You might, be able I'm, to, I'm you talking might one take one out. Yeah, yeah. Um, not more than two, but it just seems like you could. Uh, I remember the return to Ravnica uh Rakdos aggro deck ah, yes and it ran very few lands and was fairly right. consistent um, fairly good yeah that and that was that this deck reminds me of that deck it's okay. the budget burn deck right like that's yes, sort of what it is budget um, get in and hit them in the face yeah and that's what that Rakdos uh deck was back in the day mm -hmm. as well so yeah um it it feels very much like that it's a very good deck not tier one i would agree no, but it that can... Rakdos aggro deck did very well. It can yeah. cheat out those wins, right? And that's what it amounts to. <laughs> it can beat a Marvel deck yeah. once, maybe not twice, but <laughs> but yes, it 
Go try it. Yeah, yeah. It's 30 bucks. It's cheap. What are you losing? If, if you're looking for a good way to get into standard, this is probably the best way you're going to find. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty awesome. A lot of the cheap aggro decks are the way to get into standard if right. you're not looking to pay a bunch of money, as mm. you know, an Aetherworks deck is pretty expensive. True. Um, and it's not tier one, but it is competitive. And that's the key. You're able to go to an FNM yep. uh, and give this a shot. So. Absolutely. I might try it. Yeah, going I think it's forward. worth going. Um, uh, four. It's for kinda, sure. It's cute. It's cute. It's a cute little red deck. Um, well, thank you for that, Will. Dude. I'm glad we talked about that deck. That's a cool pleasure. one. Um, with that, uh, we come to our crack a pack. Yeah, short um, episode today. Yeah, it is a fairly short episode, but uh, I think a useful one. Cool. I would say. Um, cool. But. For this crack a pack, I want to mention again we are sponsored by Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles, Grand who have provided Slam. us with uh, quite a lot of packs for this. Thank um, you, thank you, thank you, thank you Big very much. Out. We want to encourage you guys to go check them out. Uh, they are working on a website with an online store, so if you're not in the Charlotte, North Carol- Carolina area, Rock Hill area, uh, you you should be able to shop with them very soon. Uh, they do a lot of cool like mystery boxes and things like that for magic <clears throat> excuse me um but they really. also do a lot of stuff with pokemon right now mm-hmm. if you're into that they do box breaks and box battles every saturday they've got a large group that comes and hangs out in cool. the store go and visit them uh it's a lot of fun i went last weekend and just hung out with them a little bit during that box break and it was really really fun they also live Neat. stream it so you can buy into it wherever you are and they will send those cards to you um Encourage you guys to go check them out. They've helped us out a lot, uh, and uh, we're looking forward to continuing that partnership yeah, with absolutely. them. Um, so go check them out. But with that, we come to our crack a pack. We're still looking for our gold cards. I'm looking for Ooh, Gideon yeah. of the Trials. Combat Celebrants, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> Another red deck thing. Hey, maybe that goes in two ticks. I don't know. Hey, maybe so. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> we have opened our packs here, and again, we'll go through sort of the the potential pick ones if we're in a limited environment, what we might look at. Um, I didn't get my rare, not okay. my Gideon, uh, but I did get Hazaret's Favor, which is an mm. interesting enchantment for two and a red. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you may have target creature you control get plus two, plus zero, and gained haste until end of turn. Hmm. If you do sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, um, I don't know how good that is in limited, to be honest. You know, I saw a funny budget brew yeah. with that card mm-hmm. and a bunch of like I steal your things effects. Well, that would be kind of which cool. there are a bunch in Kaladesh right now. Yeah. So That's a good point. It's real it's so sneaky. It's just janky, but kind of funny. It's really funny, but not a great deck. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think I don't think even in a limited <laughs> environment, I think it's okay, but not great. Okay. Um You're I don't think right. I'd pick it. The other cards that I have have laid out here that I would look at, um, not all of these would be pick ones for me, but Vizier of Deferment uh, is one of my favorites. 2-2 uh, Flash, you get to exile something. Mm. Very, very cool. Flash or Faith of the Devoted is a very cool build-around enchantment for the cycling or discard deck. Okay. Uh, you get to yeah, trance yeah. in life. Splendid Agony, I think, is a decent removal spell in black. Uh, and Miasmic. 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 Mummy. Boom words and stuff uh is a pretty good two drop uh each player has to discard a card when it enters the battlefield you can sort of leverage that for your advantage sure uh again not not first pickable actually so i think it's for me it's between the vizier and the faith of the devoted okay yeah Um, i'd be with you there and if i'm honestly just trying to go for a good deck i'd probably pick the vizier uh honestly just because it's a very solid creature it leaves me open to a lot of things but if I'm just going to be honest, I'd probably pick the Faith as a Devoted. Okay. Solely because it's a build-around fun card with cyclers. There's yeah. a lot of good cyclers in the colors, the the blue-black deck, which generally this is. Um, You're right. And it's just fun. It doesn't always win, but when it wins, you feel really good. Yeah, it's uh, good. It so, gets you reach, like we were saying. Yeah, exactly. Um, super, so, cool. super cool. I'd probably pick that. So, funny enough, <laughs> my rare today is not what I'm looking for. But it is Soul Scar Mage. Hey, we just talked about that. Yeah, from Red Ticks Red Fame, <laughs> which is probably the only deck that gets this yes. right now. Um, so yeah, uh, prowess of source control deal non combat. Blah 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 blah. Put minus one minus one counters on it. Okay, that's neat. Yeah. Um, but I am not picking that first. Okay. Um, some other things that stand out to me: Bone Picker, Trial of Knowledge. Yep. Um, 
that's kind of it. I've also got Doom Dissenter, which I would hope to wheel. I like the Binding Mummy okay. Um, in the it's zombie all right. base deck or it's in a non right. deck, it's pretty good. Again, but if build around, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, at its worst, it's a two, two for two that might get me advantage. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Um, trial of Nar what? Trial of Knowledge <laughs> is uh, a solid trial. I'm also, there's a Trial of Solidarity in here, but I think mm -hmm. this is the worst one. Yeah, um, for sure. But I think the Bone Picker is the best choice. I think so. I think it's just a solid value creature. Um, sometimes is. you get to play it for one, which is awesome. Yeah. So uh, three, two flying and death mm -hmm. touch guy for one is awesome. Yes. So it normally is four. CMC is technically four. It says bone picker costs three less to cast if a creature died this turn. Which in limited, you're going to be trading creatures. That just yes. happens. So you can set up a block or, some, mm -hmm. or a, an attack where they're probably going to trade. It's, it's right. valuable for them too. And then you get this guy out. Um, yeah. Which just seems awesome. So very fun. Um, he made a splash in um a Grand Prix that we covered. We didn't cover, but we talked about mm -hmm. a little bit. You're right. Um, You're right. I think that was a constructed one too. Yeah, if I'm I not believe mistaken. So. Um, yeah, it's good. Avon Initiate is also a consideration. Um, it's also a four drop, a uh, like Bone Picker, uh, with flying. However, it's got Embalm. Mm -hmm. Same stats, but Embalm. Um, yeah. Embalm's pretty nice. Um. Oh, psych, I just saw Painted Bluffs. That's my first pick. I changed uh, my mind. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> all right, well, cool. Still on the hunt for our gold cards. Hopefully, we'll get them at yeah. some point. Uh, but again, go check out Grand Slam. Thank you for the sponsorship. Uh, Huge and thanks. And we, we look forward to working with you in the future. With that, though, uh, that concludes our standard limited episode. Yeah, kind of shorter. Yeah, sweeter but a maybe, very good uh, deck I maybe mean, you go play uh two ticks red now and honestly you've probably got some of the pieces yeah i was gonna say if you've your been Alma playing any stuff. drafts or anything like that you've probably got quite a lot yeah, of the pieces i imagine so um, maybe um half a ticks red for <laughs> half a ticks life. red <laughs> Who knows? or 10 bucks in real life well sure. um but yeah so go check that out go play it let us know how you do we'd yeah. love to hear about if it if you steal some games from some uh, mardu or or uh, Aetherworks or something like that. Let I'd us like know. To know. Yeah. I'll, I'll do a dance for you. I'll send one up to the to the Red Gods, and hopefully we, <laughs> we get in there. We get them, boys and girls. <laughs> All right, guys. With that, um, I think we're going to get out of here. My yeah. name is Kevin. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves. Dolves. Dolves.